Good morning. Welcome to Motivating Monday, brought to you by the Jurong Church of Christ. My name is Paul Goh, and I'm glad that you've tuned in to this morning's episode. Today, I'll be sharing about the idea of fearing the Lord, taken from the perspective in the passage recorded in 2 Kings 17, 24-41. The background is that Israel, the northern kingdom that is, had fallen to the Assyrians and exiled from Samaria. In place, the Assyrians brought captives from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, Sephavayim, to settle in Samaria, as we read in 2 Kings 17, 24. And as the account goes, God sent lions among them and slew the heathen nations. Subsequently, a priest of Israel was brought in to teach the heathen how to fear the Lord. Yet it seems that they have their own ideas. We read in the account in 2 Kings 17, 29. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own, and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans have made, every nation in the cities wherein they dwelt. And later on in verses 33 and 34, They feared the Lord and served their own gods, after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners, they fear not the Lord. Neither do, do they that after the statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. So, did the heathen fear or not fear the Lord? A quick examination of the Hebrew words reveals that the two occasions used different words. In this context, when they were described to fear the Lord, it was the word Haya, which is a rather generic term most used to describe the ex existence of something. While when they were described to fear not the Lord, it was the word Yare, which is the word that specifically describes reverence to God. Thus, it, it would appear that their fear was merely an acknowledgement of the existence of Jehovah, just as they would to their own idols certainly reminds us of what Paul wrote of the Athenians in Acts 17, 21-23, who were so afraid of offending any god that they would even have an altar dedicated to the unknown god. <laughs> even Singaporeans as not as kiasu. But jokes aside, this account brings to mind some sobering and important concepts. Firstly, Mere acknowledgement of God is useless. As James famously wrote in James 2.19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. For sure, the devils believed in God. In fact, believed in only one God and trembled. More so than men. And that God is the same Jehovah that we serve today. Yet we all know what will become of the devil and his minions in 2 Peter 2.4. Secondly, true fear of the Lord entails doing exactly what he commands. Verse 34 clearly lays this out. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment of which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob whom he named Israel. As we all well know, what Jesus said in John 14, 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. The heathen obviously were not interested in truly serving the Lord. Or perhaps they thought they could proxy their service to their idols. We recall how the Philistines tried to appease God when they sought to deliver the ark back to the Israelites, as we read in the account in 1 Samuel 6. And not only is this confined to pagan but also to those who claim to be of God, yet do not follow exactly what God commands. Otherwise, the Apostle Paul would not have spent so much effort to preach against that among the churches. Virtually in all his epistles, he alluded one way or another 
to the enemies within. Until today, there's so many who will profess to believe in the God of the Bible, yet deny Him, as did the foreign nations in this account, by following and teaching the commands, commands of men as doctrine. And finally, worldliness is idolatry. Yet again, even if we acknowledge God and seemingly follow God's commands, we can still deny or not fear Him when we continue to serve mammon. The apostles and writers have the harshest criticism for such. John Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2.15 James talks about the friendship of the world is enmity with God in James 4.4. 4. Peter condemns those with covetous practices and calls them cursed children in 2 Peter 2.14. And later, further down in the chapter, the worst state of those who are again entangled in pollutions of the world. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 16, 17-18 about those who served their own belly. And of course, from none other than Jesus himself, we cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6, 24. Perhaps for this week, let's take a moment to examine how have we not feared God. Perhaps it's our own failings. Perhaps we have not been doing the work of the Lord as we should. Let us be reminded of what wise Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 12.13. To fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Let us fear in word and in deed, that we be found pleasing and acceptable. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has been motivating or at least got you thinking and hope that you have a great week ahead. Oh, yeah.